How to turn the 21 day mental diet into a mental lifestyle. The object of this video is to discuss a handful of videos ago. I did a discussion on the 21 day mental diet. Speak about it more from the perspective of turning this into a lifestyle. In the video that followed after that, I talked about harmonizing your relationship with cause and effect. Cause in the inner world and effect in the outer world through what I call conscious reflection. I also talked about conscious rejuvenation, which is the act of rejuvenating the mind, body, spirit consciously on a daily basis to further encourage and facilitate certain kinds of mental thinking, thought processes and beliefs, ideologies that are in alignment, accurate thinking with what you desire to create. Now, as a result of encouraging this mental diet for a 21 day period, you experience something called paradigm shift or the change in your paradigm. Paradigm is the interpretation of how you experience certain people, environment, circumstance, and information, which is based on information that you have consumed from your past that formed this aspect of yourself called the paradigm. As a result of being in the mental diet, your paradigm changes to be more in alignment with what you desire to create, the kind of life that you want to live, the kind of success that you want to see in your life, the kind of reality you want to experience. Now, what we want to do is repeat the 21 day mental diet again and again to bring this more into what I call a mental lifestyle. Now, this is a concept that I learned on myself in regards to entrepreneurship and health and fitness. Now, as I further understood the concept of autotelic personality, which is actions and awareness becoming one, which I discussed the other day, and I'll put a link in the description, I realized that it is far more powerful to be or allow yourself to express from a paradigm or self image that is in alignment with the outcome or what you want to see brought forth. And so the journey is called the great work, the evolution of yourself, the evolution of your self image. Now, as a result of being autotelic with entrepreneurship and autotelic with health and fitness, I experience the following. So number one, I wake up each day excited to do all the things that I know I have to do to create success and continuously evolve in success in entrepreneurship. I'm excited about it. All the aspects of the things that I know I have to do, I do automatically and I find flow in doing it. So it doesn't show up from a place of force where I don't force myself to do things. I rather am excited by challenge and I flow myself to do things. Now the same is to be said about health and fitness. I have been consistent on my health and fitness goals, and I am far more in a higher degree of cardiovascular shape, physical strength, more so now than ever in my life, because I consciously chose to be in a place of autotelic in relation to health and fitness. I automatically choose certain foods that are healthy, as well as I also enjoy certain foods that we wouldn't consider to be healthy. But rather than trying to get myself to do things, I'm automatically expressing and allowing myself to be in alignment with the outcome or the lifestyle specifically that I want to live. Not from a place of trying, more from a place of being, which by the way is the result of the paradigm changing as a result of the 21 day mental diet and repeatedly doing it again and again and again. Now the same thing is to be said about exercise and going to the gym. I enjoy running. It's something I look forward to. And I also enjoy lifting weights. It is something I look forward to. I don't see eating a certain way, which would be considered healthy, and exercising or living a certain kind of active lifestyle as work. I see it as who I am. It is who I am. Now, this didn't happen overnight. It became as a result of the evolution of myself by following processes like the 21 day mental diet. 
and as a result, my self-image change. And I essentially perform what we call an aspect of the great work. So transformation. In mental alchemy, this is called change in form, nature, and substance, specifically of the mind. So the great work is consistent purification of the mind into a deeper relationship with the higher self through being in harmony with the laws of nature and creation. So the idea behind this is that we all know where we are going. We have what is called our higher self, which reveals to us visions, goals, inspirations, the heart desires of who we aspire to become. As we continue to evolve the concept of ourself within, we begin to align ourselves with the thoughts, the emotions, and the behaviors, and the experiences in the outer world that align to the realization of that vision which is also on the journey of becoming higher versions of yourself or higher self. Now, what I have found is that there's infinite versions of this higher self, at least based on my current level of understanding. So I can always become purer in the mind. And this is why I encourage cause and effect reflection and the realization that you can identify with certain perspectives that are unique to you. In other words, say, I am to certain perspectives, identify, and we want this done subconsciously through the 21-day mental diet, so we show up as aligned, congruent, in alignment with what we desire to create, living autotelically. Now, as mentioned, this is a process. So you take the 21-day mental diet, and you repeat it again and again and again, and it becomes more of a lifestyle, such as the case with the entrepreneurial journey, my experience, the health and fitness journey, in my experience as well as my relationship with others. I notice that I am communicating in a way that creates harmony in my relationships without trying. And I focus on subconsciously, win, 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 benefit from me, others, divine, and evolution, subconsciously. In the beginning, the journey is about purification of the mind. So we release certain thoughts. We exclude them out of consciousness by not dwelling upon them. So it's not about having the negative thoughts, but rather the dwelling upon them, releasing them to bring ourselves more into higher levels of connection with the higher self through what we call this process here, which is the 21-day mental diet, simplified, purification of the mind. Now, there's many ways of going about doing this. Certainly, the study of mental alchemy is very broad and very deep. But this is the version, simplified version, that I've been working with, which I've essentially learned from studying James Allen's As a Man Thinketh. And so what he said here is very contributing to this concept of living the mental diet lifestyle, as well as we're going to talk about the aspects and the different things that you can do to make this more of a lifestyle. And again, why would we want to do this? Because the goal is to bring ourselves into alignment, autotelic, with the end result. So it's not a matter of trying or forcing ourselves, but rather flowing ourselves where we enjoy the challenge and rising up to higher levels of skill by evolving ourselves within in alignment. The great work really is to evolve your thinking within in relation to the laws of nature and creation. And as mentioned, you can create success by force or you can create yourself to a level of being that is in alignment with that end result. That's called the great work, evolving yourself to see the thoughts, emotions, and behaviors flow and outer world circumstances change on their own to reflect the thoughts. James Allen says in As Man Thinketh, there could be no object in burning gold after the dross had been removed, and a perfectly pure and enlightened being could not suffer. A man may rise to high success in the world and even to lofty altitudes in the spiritual realm, and again descend into weakness and wretchedness by allowing arrogant, selfish, and corrupt thoughts to take possession of him. It's a very important key distinction here. A man can rise to high success, so you can maintain a lot of this mental diet for a period of time and achieve the signs, the synchronicities, the progress, the flow, the success, and then all of a sudden allow a certain kind of thinking to take possession of you. And as a result of that, you begin to identify with those thoughts and beliefs and create accordingly. So as stated here, we'll say it again, very important reflection. A man may rise to high success in the world and even to lofty altitudes in the spiritual realm. 
and again descend into weakness and wretchedness by allowing arrogant, selfish, and corrupt thoughts to take possession of him. So the goal of the mental diet is to cleanse our mind through releasing, not identifying with by dwelling, releasing the thoughts of wretchedness, arrogance, selfishness, corruption, and any other thoughts that are not in harmony with the spirit of harmony, benefit for us, the end result, divine and evolution, or as stated here in the great work, the laws of nature and creation. And this is a process. Simplified by releasing the thought. You can, if you choose, cause and effect reflect and identify new perspectives and evolve your beliefs surrounding what it is that showed up as far as the negative thoughts, or you could let it go, release it, exclude it out of the consciousness. Because as a result, you'll identify with another thought. And if it's a positive thought, or accurately put, a specific thought in harmony and in relationship to what you desire to create, then you will identify with that and you will begin to move down, as Neville puts it, the bridge of incidents to the externalization of what you desire to create from that particular thread of bridge of incidents, which is in alignment with the positive thought, which is creating what you desire more from a place of flow and autotelic in alignment. Otherwise, we also call this divine will, surrendering our will to divine will, which is part of the great work. Now, some of the stuff may seem esoteric, and certainly on the journey I've been on it long enough and deep enough that it makes sense to me. But in the beginning, I had a lot of conflict and doubt and misunderstanding about how these concepts work. And I also realized that I have a lot more to learn on this journey. So as I continue to evolve and understand, it makes even more sense. So the great work is very individualized. Okay, It's between you and your higher self. Thus, we have to be able to think for ourselves, believe in ourselves, and evolve ourselves within to higher levels of understanding so we can identify processes, the tools, and methodologies that work for us. Some of these methods may work for you that I share, and some of them might be ones that are not in alignment with what you're desired to create. However, one thing will remain universal. It's the mental lifestyle. Choosing the thoughts, because the thoughts are what govern us, and the thoughts are what create our reality, which represent themselves as beliefs, assumptions, ideas, different kinds of thought processes. And James Allen also said in As a Man Thinketh, is that a particular train of thought persisted upon can help but produce itself in the outer world circumstances. So it's very important to ensure that we are persisting in certain thoughts that are in alignment with what we desire to create. Now the goal with the 21 day mental diet is to make this automatic, subconscious, turn this into what I referred to earlier as the mental lifestyle. So a mental diet is something you do to become autotelic, which is a mental lifestyle, which essentially means harmony with the laws of nature and creation. So what happens when you're autotelic? or as you continue the mental diet, as you continue to repeat it again and again and again. Here are some of the things that you'll notice. Number one is your activities each day have an end or purpose in itself. In other words, you enjoy the journey and the destination. You find yourself more present to the moment. Number two, your state of being is rewarding based on where you are and what you are doing right now. In other words, you realize that everything is contributing to your end result. You have dropped it. You have let it go because you know it's going to happen because all of creation is complete and you are on the journey to get there. As Neville once put it in one of his lectures, allow the being within you completely yield to the being within you. Allow the divine will within you to create it. And our goal is to release the suffering that is caused by disconnect, which is the disempowering thinking in relation to the faith that will bring us to that end result, which may take us down certain kinds of pathways that may not make logical sense to us, but that is how the heart creates with the mind. The heart and mind have a relationship. The heart desires and may take you on certain kinds of passages and certain kinds of pathways. And a good book to read is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho that emphasizes this really well in a story format. And the mind creates. They work together in the spirit of harmony. 
If they're not in the spirit of harmony, then the mind is overthinking. We have developed what we call an overly identified ego, where we overthink, and as a result of that overthinking, we encourage doubt, fears, and indecision, which is essentially what we're releasing in the mental diet. So keep in regard that as we have this conversation, this is a way of being ongoing. Okay, see this beyond a diet and more of a lifestyle, maintaining it. Now, another thing that will happen is you will find more flow each day in different areas of your life. So you may find flow by doing the dishes. You'll start finding flow while having conversations with people. You'll have flow when you're doing just about the littlest, insignificantly, or so it seems, important tasks like making your bed or anything in life. More so. And as a result of experiencing this, you know that you are successfully incorporating the mental diet. This is the result of it. And I'm speaking from experience from all these things because these are the exact things that I've been noticing. And I've been doing this for years, as mentioned, but now I've been applying it as a result of creating this content to a higher degree of presence and noticing this increasing as a result. And such is the case where I also share this with everyone else and they report the same results. Now, you subconsciously choose perspectives that you are aligned with in relation to your goals. Remember, and watch the videos I did on the I am aspect. We subconsciously choose aspects of reality that are based on the identification of perspective that shows up prior to that aspect in reality. What I mean by that is many ways of looking at anything. You can look at something as an obstacle or an opportunity. That's going to be based on the perspective you identify with subconsciously or consciously. If you choose to see opportunity in what is being presented to you, then upon cause and effect reflection, you will find it. If you choose to see the obstacle as something that will lead you to giving up, subconsciously, then that is what you're going to see as a result subconsciously based on what shows up. Now, the goal of the mental diet is to release from the disharmony-based thinking that is not in alignment with what you desire to create. And through the practice, you're more likely to affirm the aligned perspective, positive perspective, or more accurately put, accurate perspective, which is subconsciously assigned through the divine will through the autotelic, so we don't have to think about it. And each day you will find yourself deeply engaged in your day-to-day -day activities calmly, knowing that all is contributing to what you desire to create. I also call this conscious mind at ease and in relationship with the subconscious mind. Allow the being within you to do all the so-called work, subconscious mind. We rely and work with the power of the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is consciously choosing and we consciously in the 21 day mental diet and in this lifestyle choose the thoughts that we dwell upon. If a negative thought shows up, a disempowering thought shows up, it's the conscious mind that has the power to not allow it to impress on the subconscious mind through the dwelling. Very important. Now, as a result of integrating these aspects, of the 21 day mental diet and really what I talked about in the last few videos you experience self transformation you're essentially doing the great work and you're transforming your perspectives on reality and you're also noticing that you're finding yourself easily able to identify with whatever shows up more so each day as contributing to what you desire to create in a way that's right for you I can't tell you what that is but you're going to start noticing, and, and if you've been following the 21-day mental diet or any process similar to this, like the 7-day mental diet by Emmett Fox, mental diets by Neville Goddard, or any kind of process like this, this is what you'll be noticing. So, in that regard, you are living the autotelic mental lifestyle. You're one with, more so each day. And to calibrate this, to really emphasize this, and this conversation is designed to encourage this more in you. And as a result of being this way, living the mental diet, consciously choosing not to dwell upon the negative or disempowering thinking, releasing it, letting it go. You could, as mentioned, cause and effect reflect and understand it if you would like. 
Certainly, that's the foundation of psychotherapy, psychoanalysis, and even a lot of personal development. Most personal development is based on you communicating with somebody or a book in which you share with them the identity that you have based on the perspectives that you are consciously or subconsciously identifying with on whatever shows up, and they help you see another perspective. You have the power to do this within. You can, if you choose to, seek counsel and guidance to do it in the outer world. Certainly a combination that's right for you can be very beneficial. But you also have the power to allow the divine within, divine within, to choose the perspective for you, the being within. Neville says, Can I see the facts the world sees and still believe in the unseen state? If I can remain loyal to the unseen state, in some way I will get confirmation of it. What he's also referring to is signs and synchronicities that guide you. Okay, these are signs, outer world experiences, synchronicities that guide you specifically. They may not make sense to anyone else, but they will make sense to you. We want to release ourselves, this is what we're doing with the 21 day mental diet and this mental lifestyle, from any kind of dogmatic ways of thinking that prevent you from getting the success that you want. Now, if there are certain trains of thoughts that contribute, by all means, they will not prevent the signs and synchronicities. However, if there's ways of thinking that deny the assumption that deny the beliefs that it is possible, first of all, for you to create and in a way that's right for you, then that may be based on some dogmatic thinking. And as a result, you might be holding back some of the signs and synchronicities. And the identification with those aspects causes us to see reality from certain perspectives that in a way prevents us from seeing the signs and synchronicities. So again, all the power is within. And we're realizing the power within through this process called the great work, which is essentially being consistent to a 21 day mental diet. And as a result, you're going to uncover more information that will further you on this journey through various sources. So Neville says, can I see this facts in the world and still believe in the unseen state? So as mentioned, this is to be in alignment with the laws of nature and creation. It is not to fight against it. It is to understand and also see how it is contributing. To be able to see the outer world facts and say, if this appears to deny my assumption, then what it is, is based on a belief that I have within, or a perspective that I have within, and I can release from it. So let go to reveal the signs and synchronicities. One of the things that we can do is practice meditation. Now, the meditation that I do is actually designed to help facilitate a greater ability to catch a thought and choose whether you want to dwell upon it or identify with it or not. And it's simple. All I do is focus on my breathing and then I observe. If thoughts show up, positive or negative, I simply let go of it. I release it. And perhaps another thought will show up. I let go and I release it. And I continue focusing on my breathing, doing this for 20 minutes. Now, how this helps in the 21-day mental diet, as well as this lifestyle way of going about the 21-day mental diet, is then you have a greater ability to catch the negative thought and release it, not dwell upon it. I find that meditation, which I've been consistent in since 2008, has been very powerful and helpful on this journey because it allows me to in a way, slow everything down to be able to observe the thought showing up and then looking at it and releasing it, letting it be. Now, this is very powerful because even though meditation, you're really doing it at a interval of, let's say, 20 or 30 minutes, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And what you'll find is the 21 day mental diet is a form of active meditation. In a way, they're very similar. Number two, you can understand other perspectives. One of the things that causes conflict within us is that we are unsure as to why certain perspectives exist. So it's important to study and understand at a level that's resonant with you to understand the perspectives of others. A lot of times the perspectives of others actually contributes to creating the vision. And perhaps some of the fears that we have about perspectives of others prevent us from actually receiving the insights within 
as a result of the perspectives that they share with us. Number three, let go and focus on what is related to your vision, which is essentially developed through the meditation and the 21 day mental diet. You can, if you'd like to cause and effect, reflect and understand the perspectives that you're identifying with or the perspectives of others, or if it seems too overwhelming, you let it go. Now, the whole understanding perspectives and letting go element is actually really the foundation of personal development. If you seek counsel through a coach or a consultant or a mentor, what they're really helping you do is look at what you are identifying with as far as perspective in relation to where you are on the journey and helping you find other perspectives. Now, this is something that you could do with the guidance of others, or you can also develop the ability, and I recommend doing both in a way that's right for you, to bring yourself to the ability of being able to do this within, via the divine will. When you understand and continue to do the great work, you'll be able to uncover your own perspectives within. As a result, you become more self-confident, self-reliant, and you'll be able to differentiate between the opinions and perspectives of others and value them and understand them, but not necessarily identify with them if they're not in harmony with what you desire to create. As a result, you'll create more harmony with others because they will feel understood. One of my favorite personal development books is The Seven Habits by Stephen R. Covey, in which he says, seek first to understand, then to be understood. My goal is to understand the different perspectives, and I might not necessarily need to feel understood, but for me, I get a lot of joy of understanding the perspectives of others because I know that I will be able to find the perspectives within me and also be able to reflect upon the perspectives that is shared with me by the outer world and be able to reflect and choose accordingly. Now, another thing we want to do, let go of unnecessarily seeking approval and validation. So as mentioned in many videos, there are fundamentally two aspects within ourselves. One will we call the ego self and one what we call the higher self. Well, there's even a third, you could say the current self would be able to, who through the inner voice of discernment conversation is, is able to determine if the inner voice is facilitated by this ego self, which represents past programming that is not directly in alignment with what we want to create, but however, it indirectly is because it reveals to us about ourself and we can choose to understand that programming and affirm the ideal programming within through affirmations or self-talk, revision, or surrounding ourselves in certain environments that affirm the programming that we desire to evolve to become more like the higher self. Now, the understanding of this aspect of ourself can reveal to us if we are choosing to behave or encourage certain thoughts that further facilitate it, like approval seeking and validation. When we let go of the need for approval and validation and realize the truth that all approval and validation comes from within and externalizes to reflect the approval and validation from other if it needs to be, then we further this journey of evolving in the mental lifestyle, bringing ourselves to a higher degree of harmony. Number four, let go of information that instills doubt because this can be how it hooks you. When we dwell in doubt long enough, we become fearful. And doubt really means in a belief or anything that appears to prevent you from the idea that you can create what you desire and live the way that you choose to live. This information may not directly be trying to instill doubt in you. However, if we interpret the information from a perspective of doubt, we may notice that we'll start to dwell upon it. So thus, you can release information as it shows up and you can let it go and see it as maybe a suggestion or an opinion, or you can dig deeper into it and extract the valid facts rather than identifying with both the fact and the doubt-based programming that may be instilled in there. Or as you continue to evolve, you'll notice that you'll automatically be able to see the valid information and you won't see the doubt instilling information. And you'll be able to properly identify with what I call optimization data. Now, in the business world, this is very important because if you're going about doing your day-to-day, -day, you may experience what we call rejection. And rejection is optimization data. 
It is revealing to you about yourself, your product, your service, in relation, in harmony with those that you're serving. And if you create an identity that you're not good enough as a result of the rejection, then you'll further instill that doubt within you, and it will externalize accordingly as the experience to reveal the doubt. But however, as you continue to evolve and do the great work on yourself and maintain this mental lifestyle, you'll find yourself automatically being able to see the validity of whatever experience that you're having and figuring out how to work with that information to further contribute to the success that we desire to create, which is essentially turning what appears as an obstacle into an opportunity. So letting go is a very important part and letting go helps us see the signs and synchronicities, which is based on harmonious thinking that is in alignment with what we desire to create based on the reflections that we see in the outer world. Next, we also want to develop a greater ability to embrace the three kinds of uncertainty. Okay, three kinds of uncertainty. Now there's flow-based uncertainty, there's controlled chaos-based uncertainty, and then there's just chaos-based uncertainty. Uncertainty is this feeling that we have that many of us try to run away from. However, uncertainty holds the key for the evolution of ourselves. So in a way, we want to learn how to embrace uncertainty. And the way to do it is by categorizing it conceptually in the mind. Remember, the heart desires the mind creates. So we want the mind and heart working together. The heart's desire may send us down a pathway of uncertainty, but we have to understand how so and why so. Flow-based uncertainty. Essentially, placing yourself in certain kinds of tasks, processes, and things to do every day on the journey to creating success in which you experience challenge, but you have just enough skill that you are engaged with it and you rise up to develop higher levels of skill as well as higher levels of perspective within to actually work with whatever you're showing up, to work with so you feel more flow and as a result, create the success that you desire. This is the traditional, you could say, textbook definition of flow, where challenge meets skill. And there is uncertainty there when you're in a situation that's challenging, but it's not enough that you feel overwhelmed or stressed. You're actually engaged with it. Number two is what I call controlled chaos-based uncertainty. It's placing yourself in challenging situations, changing your environment around, very much in harmony and in relationship to the last video where I talk about evolving past the current paradigm. One of the ways that we can evolve past the current paradigm is to place ourselves in what we call controlled chaos situations. Move to a different country, change the environment, change something around drastically that brings us into a high level of uncertainty. But however, the uncertainty is there to evolve the paradigm and develop a higher degree of faith within ourselves and be able to identify when combined with the mental diet that we evolve as a result. The self-image evolves. We become higher versions of, you could say, closer to the higher self. And you end up embracing that uncertainty because you know it contributes to that end result. In other words, you go through what we call the terror barrier, a barrier that appears to hold you back psychologically, but you take the bold step in the direction and you make the bold move, whatever that means to you. And you place yourself in an environment or situation that is of controlled chaos, which has a certain degree of uncertainty. Those that have a great ability to rise up to higher levels of being actively choose to place themselves every now and then in situations where we call controlled chaos. Controlled chaos could be something like book a public speaking event, start a business, move to a different country, commit to live for one month in a total different country where you don't know anybody and you start to get to know people. All of these can be considered controlled chaos. That's because you are placing yourself consciously. You are allowing yourself to build a deeper relationship with your higher self. And it is an act of faith in a way. Number three is chaos based uncertainty. So these are situations or circumstances that occur in our life that we didn't necessarily want to put ourselves in. But however, we experience a high degree of chaos. Maybe you lose your job. Maybe certain things happen in the economy. Maybe certain environments change drastically, and now you're in this deep level of uncertainty. Now, in flow-based uncertainty, you're using your conscious mind in harmony with the subconscious. 
In controlled chaos based uncertainty, you're using more subconscious than you're using conscious. You're allowing your subconscious to do most of the creation. Now in chaos based uncertainty, it may appear that you don't have the ability to overcome the situation. You can be very reactive to it or even fearful in a chaos based uncertainty situation. However, this is where we have the greatest ability to practice faith and completely yield to the being within us to externalize and create the end result. And this is done through practicing faith and create the end result by letting it go in the mind and saying it is going to work out. Now this can be very stressful for a person that always wants to consciously control things, but this is one of the important elements of development on this journey if you want to get to a higher level of success. You got to be able to embrace all three kinds of uncertainty and chaos based uncertainty can be the most challenging. By placing yourself in as much flow based uncertainty and controlled chaos based uncertainty as you can handle, you will have a greater ability to deal in chaos based uncertainty. In other words, you're developing yourself, which is another one of the reasons why we go on a personal development journey or the evolution of our self image journey because it allows us to deal with things as they show up in ways that others may not be able to deal because they have not valued going down this inner work journey on themselves. So here are five principles for dealing or transmuting uncertainty, transmuting, turning the meaning of things into another meaning. Number one, integrate and move forward. Realize that whatever shows up is actually contributing more so each day towards your vision. Evolve your perspective surrounding what shows up and move forward. Release from the negative dwelling or the negative thought regarding what shows up. See it as practice and continue to evolve through the practice. Number two, see life as lessons in perspectives. There's infinite perspectives on whatever shows up. When you think of the word entrepreneurship, you can find thousands and thousands of different perspectives from thousands and thousands of different people on the topic of entrepreneurship you want to find the perspective that's in alignment with what you want to create. Number three, opportunities present themselves as obstacles. So if you realize that an obstacle can be transmuted into an opportunity, then it's easier for you to maintain flow. It's easier for you to go into a controlled chaos based environment and grow yourself and create success and understand something. A lot of controlled chaos based environments or situations usually tend to have the most reward. And that is also to be said about chaos based uncertainty. Those environments, those that can deal in those environments that are chaos based uncertainty have also a great opportunity for rewards in those environments. If you equip your mind with the ability to see opportunities present themselves when an obstacle shows up by affirming it that you can do it and believing it and consuming information that further affirms that you can do it, you'll start to see it more often. Number four, the all provides inspiration to move forward. The all, as in all people, circumstance, environment, and information, is contributing to what you desire to create. It's an affirmation that I say a lot, and one of the reasons why I say that is as you continue to affirm, as you believe, so it shall be done unto you. If you believe that that's the way it works, you're going to see it more so. Number five, experiences flow from states of mind. States of mind. There are infinite states of mind. Flow is a state of mind. And you can choose to identify with certain states of mind. And one of the best ways of identifying with a state of mind is to simply ask yourself, what would it be like if I had achieved the result? How would I feel right now? And as a result, what you'll notice is that you feel a certain way. You've essentially found the state of mind that is in harmony with what you desire to create. Your inner voice has found it for you. Then what you do is you identify with that state by meditating upon the image of what it looks like, by realizing that you are right now identified with the state and the outer world is changing to reflect that state. And then what you'll notice is signs and synchronicities that flow from that. And as you continue to maintain that, which you can couple that by being in flow, and for me, it usually works like this. I identify with a certain state of mind automatically that, let's say, will be disempowering. I realize that experiences or whatever it is that shows up in this outer world is a result of the identification of that state of mind. I then ask myself, 
What do I want to experience? What is the end result? Or how do I want my journey to be? I then feel a certain image pop up into my mind or a certain inner voice conversation. And I encourage that image, meditate upon it, look at it, reflect upon it, and notice that my mood changes, as well as my inner voice dialogue also changes. At that point, I've successfully identified with that state. Now, things begin to change as a result of that identification with that state. Also, what I get personally, because most of what I work with is in the entrepreneurship space, so I always like to communicate this information for entrepreneurs, is the exact thing that I need to do next. And then all I do is find flow, follow the process of being in flow by doing that thing. And I have then identified with that state of mind, which now allows me to experience certainty in the uncertainty. Now, I trust this information is going to be very helpful and in contribution with what you desire to create. The premise being that really what we're doing is we're evolving our self-image. We're evolving ourselves through the process of what we call the great work. Consistent purification of the mind into a deeper relationship with the higher self through being in harmony with the laws of nature and creation. And these are some of the elements that can help you. Now, to further instill this, let's reflect upon a very important quote from James Allen's As a Man Thinking. A man becomes calm in the measure that he understands himself as a thought-evolved being, for such knowledge necessitates the understanding of others as the result of thought. And as he develops a right understanding and sees more and more clearly the internal relations of things by the action of cause and effect, he ceases to fuss and fume and worry and grieve and remains poised, steadfast, and serene. Now, as we reflect upon this, we further realize that the 21-day mental diet has helped us release from certain kinds of disempowering programming that we were identifying with, perspectives. And we were able to reflect and see how our reality changes as a result of choosing different perspectives. And this is what we call the cause and effect reflection. Now, this gives us a greater degree of confidence to be able to deal with higher levels of uncertainty. When we have a higher degree of confidence through this process, very pragmatically so, to deal with high levels of uncertainty, we find our own tools, processes, systems, ways of thinking through our inner voice conversation, through being inspired by others, that continues to help us move forward to creating what we desire. And as a result, it's obvious, as he states here, that we will cease to fuss and fume and worry and grieve all of those are manifestations of aspects within ourselves that are generated with the identification of uncertainty like it was a bad thing. If you embrace uncertainty and see it as contribution, and perhaps some situations will be challenging than others, then you'll be able to rise up to higher levels of thought. And on the journey for creating the success that you desire, it can be riddled with what we call uncertainty. We want to be able to look for ways of dealing with uncertainty and thus to maintain this autotelic mental lifestyle. Remember that flow-based uncertainty is usually where we choose to be. Control chaos-based uncertainty develops us. And thus, maintaining this autotelic mental lifestyle or harmony within, we develop a greater ability to deal with uncertainty. Now, because uncertainty can be a very complex topic, but these are certain aspects right here that can help you. Placing yourself in flow based uncertainty, choosing flow, maintaining flow, valuing controlled chaos based uncertainty, and once in a while placing yourself in controlled chaos so you can grow, so that you can automatically have more faith because you've seen yourself create success in many different ways, and you'll be better equipped at dealing with chaos based uncertainty. This is why doing the great work is very important because if we continue to grow, evolve, and develop, then if something shows up, we're better equipped to deal with that uncertainty and maintain this certain 21-day mental diet, which has now turned into a mental lifestyle, harmony. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.